Hello, hello, crafty friends. How you guys doing? Oh, let's see. Somebody's making roses. Who's making roses? I saw Nellaris and Mary T. Annette. I think that's the three of you that are out there right now. We're again making roses for golden anniversary on Saturday. That's Mary T. I love making roses with paper. I like the heartfelt creations, roses and mold. Is that what you're doing, Mary T, or you got something else going? Well, I tell you, it seemed like this was just such an easy class to do because I've done this class before and I thought, oh, that's going to be great fun. But, you know, I could not find the sample card. <laughs> so I had all of my people in quilling class send me their copies. And this is what we're going to make today. This is what I call a whimsical flower. I think this would be absolutely fabulous with a little fairy stamped below it. So it could be a fairy I'm flower too. What? So try and hold it in front of your face because your face was getting the focus and your card oh. wasn't. Okay. Yeah, just like that. So you get to see it on my phone. <laughs> Usually I like to show you the finished card first, but I have no idea where it is. It's going to show up as soon as this class is done. <laughs> I do not know Mary R's favorite colors. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Diane. We're going to have fun today. We are going to work on a husking board. You guys remember how to work on a husking board? Well, that's what we're going to do. We are going to make a three color flower petal, which is not my original design. I saw it on, I think her name is the something papery on YouTube, making the three color husking flower. So it's not my original design, but, oh, I wanted to trade out my green and get some dark green. Let me get some dark green here. Um, but I saw her making them, and I thought, oh, that's a wonderful project. We're going to do that. <laughs> and so we are, I'm going to use, do I want to use something as dark as forest? I don't think I do. I think maybe we'll use sage, because that forest is really, really dark. So let's just go ahead and go with what I already had out here. I figured we could use either forest or leaf green. I'm going to go with, excuse me, sage or leaf green. I'm going to go with the sage. Why? Because I like sage. Okay. Let's go ahead, since we've said our greetings and we've shown them the project, let's just get this show right on the road, Jordan. Jordan's here being my camera person today. As you know, Bryce has kind of been my my Margie since <laughs> Margie's been out sick, but Margie or um, Bryce had to go to a company meeting in Palm Springs. He had to go to Palm Springs. Oh, darn. Shall we say a big <sighs> for Bryce? Cause he had to go to Palm Springs, but um, Jordan agreed to come and be my camera person. So say hello, Jordan. Hello. <laughs> She just loves it when I put her on the spot like this. It makes her so happy. She glares across the table at me. <laughs> okay, let's focus that camera on my hands and come way, way in. Because we're going to work on this board. We need to be way, uh, yeah, come way in. Down and way in. And work on this board. Yeah. That's getting pretty good. I want to show you the board first. I'm actually just going to hold it in place here for a minute so you can see where your pegs go on your husking board. So this peg right here has a slot in it just like a quilling tool. You'll find it in your pegs because usually they're kind of a brass color and the other pins are silver. So... You want that one at your anchor place, which is right in the middle on the bottom. And then you're going to angle out from that. The first pin on there, you're going to bring five pins up, okay, through the center. 
and then you're going to come out to the side and your pattern is that between pins number one, number two and three on the upward pins, you're going to come out uh, one full slot. So you're skipping two from your anchor pin on the angle or straight out skipping one little spot. You're going to place your first pin. See that? Come in just a little bit more while we're doing this. Then I'll let you bring it back out again. There we go. That's excellent camera work right there. Okay. So you're skipping two pins on the angle. Or this pin goes right between pins two and three. And then you're going to just skip one pin and bring that angle on up on both sides. So I'm going to hold it here for a second so those of you who go back to do this video can align your board correctly. Okay, now we are going to start with a pink strip of paper. It doesn't have to be very long. I'm going to load my paper into the slot just as if I were going to quill with it. I'm going to give it just a couple turns here. And I usually glue it. You, they say you shouldn't have to, but I guess I pull too hard on my paper or something because it always wants to come unwound. So for me, anytime I'm building an anchor, I just put a little spot of glue there and wrap it on around. Now do make sure, I've had somebody do this, that you're not gluing your um, starting pin shut. <laughs> she, glued her, she glued her quilling tool shut. It's the same difference. Okay, with this pink strip, this the, pink, the paper I'm using is actually raspberry, if you care. I'm going to come right around that first peg. Okay. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to go right around the second peg. I'm going to glue this. My tweezers probably. Will you dig around in this? toolbox here and see if you can find my purple tweezers, Jordan. Right here at my side. The top shelf. I should have had my tweezers out. Yeah, right here, maybe. Oh, look here. I found a pair. Okay. I just pulled that off because it wasn't laying flat in there. I'm going to do that again. Okay. wanted to glue it, but I didn't want to glue it if it was off at an angle and it wasn't laying right. So let's try that again. I'm wrapping around the first peg. I'm wrapping around the second peg. Tell me if you guys can't see what I'm doing. There you go. One and two, see those? First and second pegs. I'm going to tear my paper right there. I'm going to put a little glue on the end of it. Just a little glue will do. I'm going to wrap that on around. Really? It tried to get away from me, but I'm going to wrap it around there. Come on. It's just a little piece of paper. <laughs> oh, it's being contrary. I'm going to put a little more glue on there. And it is going to wrap around there. There we go. Just like that. So I have one piece of paper at my starting point that went around the first pig and came back, went around the second pig, came back, torn off. Okay. Next, I'm going to use yellow. Now you can see, I just used the tiniest little piece of my pink there. 
We're going to use yellow. I'm going to glue my yellow to my pink at the back here. Just a little spot of glue. Probably more glue than I needed. <laughs> I'm going to glue my yellow to my pink. And then I'm going to let that tack there for just a second so I'm not pulling it loose. I'm going to go around the next peg in my line. Just see, I pulled it loose. Going right up the right up the straight line through the middle. I'm going to come around the bottom. And I'm going right around the per the the pink strips I already put in there. I'm going to go around the bottom. I'm going to come up and go around this a third time. So if you're counting on your pins, I, the first one I went around was number four from my base. If you count my base as number one, one, two, three, four. I started with yellow at four, five, and six. Now I've gone all the way up. Oh, this glue bottle is giving me more glue than I need. I guess that's better than getting less glue than you need, but not much better. <laughs> it actually takes longer to dry if you get a bigger glob of glue there. So this is what it looks like now. You've got the pink and it's covered with the yellow. Now next, we're going to add a piece of orange. We're going to glue that at the bottom. And this is the most important instruction in the construction of these flowers. Pull it out. Oh, I actually have regular orange now. That's good. Okay. This is the most important instruction oh, in the construction of these flowers. I'm going to put a little glue there, and I'm going to let it tack to the bottom. And then I'm going to start winding around my diagonal points. But this is super important. When I go around the diagonals, I'm going to the inside. See that? I'm going to the inside of my pen. If you start winding it wrong, you will know because there's nowhere to go with your paper. If I went this way, I don't have a way to get back. No. Let's try that again. I'm just pulling on it to show you, but I'm having problems pulling the paper loose. Okay. Okay, if I went to the from the outside in, you will quickly see I got nowhere to go with my paper. I'm kind of landlocked. So we go from the inside out, and then I can come right back to the base of my pedal again. See that? Every time I go around this base, I'm going to put a little spot of glue there. Now I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to grab the first pin and I'm going to come back. I'll come back around and yep, I'm going to put a little spot of glue there. Each time I come around, I'm going to come up and I'm going to grab the second pin. I'm going to, on the way by, I'm going to put a little spot of glue at the bottom. Second pin on the left. I'll put a little spot of glue on the bottom. Just tiny amounts of glue is all it really takes. Mine is actually acting up a little bit. Actually, I already have a little glue there. 
Mine's acting up a little bit because I'm getting more glue than I want. <laughs> Which means it's not grabbing and tacking fast enough for the work I'm doing. I'm coming to the other side. See that? I just keep winding on my husking board. Coming back up the other side. I forgot something important. I should have joined two pieces of orange together. So we're going to stop and do that because I'm not going to have enough orange in this piece. Let's stop and add a piece of orange to this. It's been a few weeks since I've done this project and I've already forgotten. I'm going to add a piece of orange to the end here. Make sure your join is straight. Just give that a second to tack. Hi, Catherine. We're making whimsical flowers tonight. I also like to call them fairy flowers. Okay, we're going to continue winding. Each time we come past the base, we're going to put a little dab of glue there. We catch our final pin on the right side. We're going to come back. I'm going to put a tiny dab of glue there. Oops, I'm setting my glue bottle right in your view, aren't I? And then we're going to come around here. And we're going to catch our last one. I'm going to tear my strip there. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of it. And I'm going to wrap that around. This is my what my flower looks like at this point. Okay. I'm going to give that one second or two to tack up. Then I'm going to take my tweezers. And I'm going to gently lift that right off. It's not unusual for the base pin to come off with it. And what you have at this point, get my base pin back in, is you have something that looks just like this. Let me put a piece of white behind it so you can see. <clears throat> It looks just like this at this point. Now, next, we're going to put some little dabs of glue on each of the petals. Little dabs of glue, tiny dabs of glue on each of the petals as we work our way up. See that? Just little dobs. And we're going to close this flower in until the petals touch at the top. Um, yes, Glenn, we will. We will have spare pens here when our current um, Quilt Creations order gets here. They just started selling the spare pens for the husking boards. I want to show you what this looks like because this is beautiful. Look at her beautiful petal with three colors. Isn't that pretty? We're going to make five of these. So if you didn't get it that time, you got a good opportunity to see it again. Let's start with our pink. We're going to pull out our little um, starting pen. We're going to give this a good roll or two around here. Yeah, Quilt Creations just started selling them, so I ordered them, and they are on the way. I'm missing a bunch of pins out of mine, too. The set usually has two starter pins in it. Somehow I've completely lost my second starter pin, and now I know I'm missing other pins. The more I use it, the more I lose it. 
the queen of quills. <laughs> Catherine from France says, I'm the queen of quills, Jordan. You may, you may address me as your majesty. <laughs> Is that making a princess? I just, I just want to be a princess. <laughs> you can be the princess of quills if you like, but you do have to learn to quill. Uh, can we be the other quill with the quill and ink? Oh, uh, yeah, we probably could do the quill and ink. I think you could be the queen, the princess of quilling yeah, with cool. a quill and ink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I expected her to tell me to get out of town, but she says as long as she can be princess she doesn't mind if i'm calling me her your majesty i'm thinking she's going to have a really hard time doing that with a straight face okay just grab my use my tweezers to kind of grab that little loose piece of paper Move it where it belongs. Remember, we start out our quilling with moving our pink up two pegs. We anchor with our pink. Then we go up two pegs, my little yellow. This would be long enough to do like a similar piece to the pink in a different flower, but it's not long enough for this job. So I'm going to get a fresh piece of yellow out here. Actually, I think. I do have a short one that I think is long enough. Maybe not. That's, that's not quite long enough. Let's get a fresh one. <laughs> okay. I want to show you. We have these little bags in the store right now. The little cellophane bags that you buy your quilling strips in tend to tear up over time. And then pretty soon you've got a rat's nest of quilling strips all over. One of our people in class recommended getting some thin long bags, which I did. These are three by 10 inches. And when I open a bag, I put my name tag for the, for the color right into the pack, into the Ziploc package. And then these are nice sturdy bags. They come like a hundred to a bundle and they're about $6 and they're infinitely reusable i mean you can use it till you wear it out and this is a nice sturdy bag so um re highly recommended for your quilling strips <laughs> i have to tell on myself when we were quilling together and i did that kind of quilling series with you guys i was not taking good care of my strips and they were all just going into a bin and, uh, you know, pretty soon my packages tore up and it was just a mess. I'm skipping now and I'm, I'm going over the top of the two pink ones I did. And then I'm going up from my base pin, if I include that in my count, my base pin to where I just went was four pegs. Now I'm going to go around number five. Now I'm going to go around number six. I'm not going to do this quite as slowly this time because you've seen it once. I'm going to tear that off. I'm going to put a little dab of glue on it. Or as little as this glue bottle is letting me put. I think it's got a little air bubble or something in there that's forcing it up. <laughs> when were we quilling together and what have I missed? There are a series of quilling videos in our live stream library that you can access Catherine, we made a number of projects together. So we have finished with our yellow. Remember, we're just attaching our yellow. You don't have to wrap, you don't have to glue every wrap with the pink and the yellow. You do when we get to the orange. In fact, this time I'm going to intentionally show you what happens if we don't glue each one, okay? I'm going to skip one on purpose. I'm going to, it doesn't take a full strip of orange, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the orange we had last time. So I'll just attach these two. You do want to make sure when you attach that you 
have those strips straight. Okay, so I have a nice straight line there. I'm going to take this orange strip now. I'm going to glue it to the back of that yellow that I put down. I'm going to tack that there. It's going to take just a second to tack on there. And then I want you to remember, remember what I said last time, the most important instruction for this job right here is to go to the inside of that pin when we wrap it. So we're going to go to the inside, give it a little dab of glue. I know I said I was going to do one that I didn't glue, but I'm going to wait if, until we get out here a little ways. I'm going to go up to my second pin, go from the inside. I'm going to come and pick that up. Tiny dab of glue. Go to the each time I come back, tiny dab of glue there. Okay, this time, remember I said I wanted to skip one. I'm going to skip it right there to show you what happens. We don't glue it each time. It's not a disaster, but I'm just not going to glue that one place. Everything else gets glue. I'm just wrapping from the inside each time. Come up, pick up that last pick. Come on over here. Catherine wants to know if you need a degree in mathematics. <laughs> no, no degree necessary. <laughs> if I needed a degree in mathematics, I'd be in deep and serious trouble. You know, I, I was an accounting major, but you know, my toughest subject was math. <laughs> There's a difference between math and accounting. No, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. So we used about a strip and a half of that orange this time. Now, we're letting that tack just a second. I'm going to take a swig of my Diet Coke Nectar of the Gods, you know. Now I'm claiming God, and I guess. <laughs> I've gone from being a queen to a deity. Nectar of the Gods. Okay, if it's nectar, if you're only drinking it, does that really make you a deity? <laughs> no, well, no. It's just the nectar of the gods. Okay, popping that out. Okay, well, you know what? I had enough glue on there already that it tacked anyway. I guess I have to show you next time what happens if we don't. Basically, these little coils just kind of spring apart. You have to stop and glue them. It's not a disaster if that happens. Okay, we've got this beautiful little piece here, haven't we? Isn't that pretty? Nope, Margie is still out. I'm thinking that Margie, in fact, I know Margie will be out all of this week because I told her, Margie, I love you and stay away. <laughs> you cannot come to work. Um, she is still under the weather. Okay, we got a tiny bit of glue on each one of those, just like that. Now we're going to fold those up. So basically what's happening is each of those smaller coils is tacking to that piece we put up the middle. And these end coils will tack to each other. Margie will be out at least this week. She tried to come today, and I said, absolutely not. I was talking to her on the phone, and she said, <laughs> I think I think I could, I could teach my class on Thursday. I think that would be okay. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> First of all, you haven't tested negative yet. And secondly, you don't sound like you need to be going anywhere. You need to stay home and rest, rest, rest. So much to her dismay, Margie is not here today. She said, well, I'll come in Sunday for sure then. And I said, no, you won't. You will not be here Sunday. <laughs> I have a full house and Bryce is already helping me. We do not need you to come in. I love you, stay home. <laughs> 
So here's our beautiful petals. We now have two. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to make my stem. Because I'm making this into a card, I want to make sure that I have a really sturdy stem on it that doesn't bend easily. These petals, once you build them up like this, they don't bend, you know, they don't, they don't get smushed easily. But I want to make sure I have a stem that will not smush easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to fold it in half. This is my sage green. Bryce is off in Palm Springs, California at a company meeting for his company. So I convinced Jordan she wanted to come down here and be my camera person. And, <laughs> and uh, so we will have Jordan today and Saturday. And then Bryce will be back on Sunday. And he has volunteered to help me with my class. I actually have a pretty big class on Sunday. And we're doing a messy, messy project, which is too much fun. We're doing Jamie powders. So that should be a ridiculous mess in the classroom. But it will be great fun. Okay, adding a little strip all the way up in glue. I have folded my strip. Put glue on one side, smush those sides together, make sure they stack up nicely. We don't need a inch wide stem, we just need a stem. I'm going to press the air out of here. And then I'm going to do it again. I like to make sure that that really tacks good. And then I'm going to fold it again. When I make a card, I want this stem piece to stand at attention. I do not want it laying over and looking icky. So I'm going to fold this again. And this is about all the stem I'm going to need for a typical card. So I'm going to end up with a strip that's... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Catherine's comment? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to glue this one. And now we're going to have a strip that means business. It's just not going to just smush over when it goes on our card. So... We've got this nice stem made for our leaves. We'll just set that off to dry till we're ready for it. Let's do another petal. We're two-fifths of the way there. I think this little one might work. Let's see if this little one will work. Love to use up all these little, little bits of paper. I like when I have a project that lets me use all these little bits. Okay, I usually put a little bit of glue at my anchor because I inevitably pull them loose from the pen. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. Let that tack just a bit. And I'm going to put insert my pen in my board at that base point. I'm going to wrap one. I'm going to wrap two in this bright, beautiful raspberry color. I like this flower because it's, this is um, eighth inch glen. Um, Quilt Creations papers come in um, eighth and quarter. Those are the primary ones. They actually sell a couple wider ones too but eighth and quarter, and we're using eighth inch. Okay, so we got our two little, oops, hello there. We got our two little beginner pins done, wrapping each one individually. Now we're going to go to our yellow, grab a strip of that. Thank you for asking that question, Glenn. That was a really good question. I should have said what I was using. I am using pink. 
my pink is actually raspberry and this one is yellow <laughs> no fancy title to it this one's yellow <laughs> i put a little bit of glue on there i'm gonna tack that right to where i was working here at the end let that sit for just a second and i'm gonna start wrapping my pins again i'm gonna go to pen number four and wrap around I'm going to go to pin number five and ramp around. I love these little these little husking boards because they're tiny enough that you can really manipulate the board, twist it this way and that. And they're just really handy. <laughs> and they're not expensive. I think they're about... I'm not positive of the price. I think they're about $7. And now we will soon have replacement pins for them too. Okay. So our yellow is glued on. So we have our strip right up the middle. We're going to start with our orange. We're going to glue two of them together. One of the things that has surprised me with quilling is just how much material you actually use in a little design. You wouldn't think that some things have so much material in them. Like those little pots I showed you, it takes 10 strips to make one pot. <laughs> that little miniature pots, 10 strips. So darn cute, though. Did I tell you guys? I don't know if I did. Oh, Jordan, will you get me something? In the house, in the window. Um, there is a green get well on the top of the stack. A green get well card. When you say by your chair, do you mean by your chair? Yeah, right at my chair. I was not gluing that while I was talking. Let's put a little glue on there. We have to show off your card, Glenn. It's so stinking cute. I laughed and laughed. I thought that was just the cutest thing I'd seen in a long time. So you have to show your card you sent. Very, very clever. Okay. Pin number two going up the row. Put stop and put just a little glue here and there. Keep that thing together. I'm going to skip the glue this time. I'm going to go up and I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a little spot of glue. Are you guys seeing well enough that you'll know what to do when you are ready to do yours? This little board can be used and used and used and used and used. You're going to use the same one for years. It's not expensive, and we all know quilling strips are not expensive. These strips cost $1.49 a pack for 100 pieces. So not expensive. Now, I skipped a couple places there when I was wrapping this one. So hopefully this time I can get the illustration that I wanted with what happens if we forget to glue. A little swig of Diet Coke. Okay. Gonna lift this off with my tweezers. Just come underneath here and pull that off. The base pen will usually pull off with it, see? It's just, <laughs> it's not falling apart again. 
that's like the that's not the worst problem I've ever had that something will not pull apart on me. But <laughs> I'm sure not getting to give you guys the illustration I wanted to give you. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Just happened. See there? That's what happens if you don't glue it on every rotation. Just set it down here, babe. And when that happens, we put a little dab of glue in it, and we just put it back together. It's not a problem. So if you do forget the glue on every rotation, you might end up with a spring, but it's an easy one to fix. Okay. We're going to put a little dab of glue right on all of our little loops. Just to dabble do it, just like that. We're going to fold these up and the magic happens. And it becomes a beautiful three color petal with that bright pink center. I'm going to, I see a little repair I'm going to need to do on this one. See it? My little center where my peg came out, slid up. I'm going to need to put a little glue there. Not a problem. It's absolutely fixable. Just got to get my tweezers. Add a little glue down here at the base. Just a little right in there. Get my tweezer and pull that loop back down where it belongs. There we go. And now my loops all look like they should. <laughs> and so we have our third petal. And we and see how easy that was to fix. So all the little things that happen, it's just not a problem. See that little white spot in there? Don't worry. This is this is this straight glue dries clear. So we'll get that. Okay. We need a little piece of pink. We have. Oh, there it is. Lost my base pin there for a minute. Hit that um, air conditioning button over there. Just hit the button that says cool. And then down on the bottom part, hit the part that says swing, please. Cool and swing. Um, if it's not reacting, hit cool and swing again. I have a lot of stuff surrounding it up there. And my air conditioner sits right over my paper racks. And if we're not at just the right angle, it doesn't see the instructions coming its way. Okay. So put our base pin back in. We'll wrap numbers one and two. So you can see how this would be just... You could do this fairly quickly and easily, even though you're making five petals per flower. You can do this and make half a dozen cards like this in an evening if you wanted to. Because they actually go together pretty fast. I'm going to show you the leaves. I'm going to show you the calyx for the flower. Now, the, the petal design is borrowed from that YouTube video that I told you about. But the construction of our fairy flower is all ours. What we do with it for after the construction of the petal is all ours. So I'm holding my yellow in place so it will tack good. And I'm wrapping number four. Come on, I really am. There we go. Number four. Number five. And number six of our pens. Okay. 
Then I'm going to tear off and glue my yellow. Can everybody see okay? You feel like you have a good handle on how this goes together? Nobody's talking. Nobody's even chatting. Are you enchanted or yeah, bored? Is everybody sleeping out there? <laughs> they might be, Jordan. Well, you gotta wake him up. You could start playing the bagpipes. <laughs> I could start playing the bagpipes if I had any. <laughs> Okay, let's put two orange together. <laughs> Glenn says it's mesmerizing. Since I finished this petal, I'm going to show off your card, Glenn. So if you're out there, hang on, because you're going to see a creation by the cantankerous crafter, Glenn himself. <laughs> Just as soon as I finish wrapping this petal, we're going to see the creation by the cantankerous crafter. Okay. Oops. I'm going to glue that orange and hold it. I'm going to add a little extra glue as we come around each time. And we're going to start wrapping. Wrapping around the inside of the pins. AC feels good. Thank you for turning that on. You feel it on the swing? Are you asking me or are you telling me? No, I said, are you feeling it? Uh, I'm sort of feeling it. I'm still pretty overheated, so I haven't quite gotten the... Or I'm not feeling it quite yet. Let me wrap it. Make sure you catch just the pins you want. We also want to have to wipe off the extra glue I've got accumulating down there. Had to do a little surgery on my board before we started because one of my holes was glued partway closed. But I got it cleared, cleared out. I used my pokey tool. Pound it on the end of it, the glue pop loose. And we tear it off, glue it at the bottom. Okay. Another good thing you can do. Just use your tweezers to kind of gather up some of that excess. Just get it out of the way. Okay. I'm going to leave that right there while I show you this card that Glenn made. It's so cute. Ouch, cut, scrap. It's such cute paper, Glenn. I don't know where you got it, but it's super cute. Wishing you all the best. And it opens to a tissue box. <laughs> Isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> it opens up to a tissue box. <laughs> I love it, Glenn. It's so clever. Here's how he made it. He's got the tissue fed through a slot in the top. <laughs> So it's so cute. We've talked about how to make these little pop-ups. You know, you just put a put a uh, a score line here at the bottom, a score line here at the top, fold it, you know, glue it in and fold it. And
and then he put a slit in the top to put his tissue through but i just think that is just the cutest thing <laughs> had to show you that <laughs> thank you for sending it so everybody could see glenn okay let's pop this loose and so much glue build up it won't surprise me if i'm kind of glued to the board down here I did it again, pulling that bin out. Okay. Once again, I'm going to put a little... See, I kind of pulled my... You can just fit that right back in there. Pull it down tight with your tweezers. And it's good as gold. Now, let's put a little glue on our petals. This is four out of the five we need. We're going to stop and do a leaf next, I think. Well, no, we'll do, a, we'll do the calyx next. Let's do the calyx next. Then we'll come back and do the petal. I don't want you to get bored watching. Unless you think that would be confusing. If you think it's confusing, we'll just finish the petals. Now, the second one doesn't always hook together. I don't care. See, um, I don't know if you can see it. The second petal doesn't always actually attach. I don't care if it does. As long as it attaches at the top, that's the most important thing. Okay. Let's, what do I want to do? Let's just go ahead and make the last one of these, and we'll do the other two shapes, because I don't want to confuse anybody. Okay, so there's my there's my base pen. Come on. What happens when I try and do something left-handed? It doesn't work real well for me. I'm going to wrap this pink around my pen a time or two. And then I'm just going to give it a little shot of glue, tiny, tiny bit, just enough to hold it. Okay, we're going to wrap this around here, then wrap around peg number two, wrap around peg number three. Tear off and glue. I'm going to send you a newsletter with the supplies that I'm using today. I will link you to my quilling videos in case you want to check out the ones that we did online before. Okay. Oh, I have a couple of these yellows left. I can put these together and use these in my fifth flower. So I'm going to do that. Because why not? Let's use up these pieces. Make sure your join is nice and straight. We're going to put a little bit at the bottom. A little bit of glue down there to tack that yellow. Hold that while we get, whoops. Come on, get in there and stay there. Get on there and stay there. Okay. I'm going to go up around pick number four. Yep, that's just not going to stay. Got to have a little more glue. 
Okay. Okay. That should be plenty of wood to hold it. Going around pig number four. And pig number five. I just love quilling. It's like, I think it's probably my number one favorite paper craft right now. I just love it. Having such fun. I'm going to tear off and put a little glue down to secure that yellow. Yep, we're securing that yellow again. <laughs> I don't want that yellow laying down on my board. I want that yellow attached to my peg. There we go. Okay, so we get that bright pink and that yellow in. We're going to get two sheets of orange. And I could probably use one sheet and one of these leftovers. This will be our last petal for our flower. Hey, there's Thelma. <laughs> Tissue and not toilet paper. <laughs> I suppose you could do that with a toilet seat if you really wanted to be crude. You could devise a little toilet in there. <laughs> Never considered that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to attach my orange. I'll put a little glue with each rotation. This time I'm wrapping from the inside of each peg. <clears throat> if I don't wrap from the inside, I will quickly find I got nowhere to go. Because you kind of get landlocked. There's no way to continue winding. You'll see what I mean if you try to go the wrong way. And if that happens and you get confused, stop and just go to the inside of the pen. Like that. Back around. Okay. Up and around. A little glue. Up and around, just about finished with our fifth petal. How many petals does this flower have? Five. Five. Then we have to make the calyx of the flower and the leaves. Put it together and we're done. I think the next thing we'll do is to get our card base ready so we can have some time to dry before we try to glue our things down to it. And, whoops, that one tried to escape. No, no, no. It must stay put. There we go. Okay, we've got our pedal on there. And let's it dry for a second. Get our card out here. <coughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Thelma says she knows Glenn's a naughty boy, but she loves naughty boys. <laughs> Thelma's <laughs> 80 something. Thelma's a player is what she is. Yeah, Thelma says she's a cougar. Mm, cougar. She's a cougar. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab this May 23 calendar that's no longer of any value. I'm going to put it down under my card. I've, I'm using one of those cold creations cards. I'm going to grab my Distress Oxide, my blending brush. And when I'm using this, it's okay to really load this up with ink, but you want to daub off a little of the extra first. What you don't want is to get a real strong color on the edge. Then I'm gonna go to the inside of my card and I'm going to start just blending up onto the edge. See there? That's how you get a pretty, soft, beautiful edging to your card. Isn't that pretty? Looks like I'm a little uneven. I got more on one side than the other, so I think I'll come up a little higher over here. And I like it just like that. I'm going to stop. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue this flap shut. Which one am I gluing flap? This one. I'm going to glue this flap, this flap shut. Put a little around the edge. And then put a little around the oval to hold this nice and tight. <coughs> And I want this one closed. You have to look at how you want your card to open. And now we've got our card base ready to go. Pretty. This oxide, in case you were wondering, is dried marigold. Use one of our new little blending brushes. Love those things. Okay, let's finish our petal. We've got a stem, we've got our card base. This will be our final flower petal. <clears throat> we'll gently remove our center. I don't know why all three of these pulled loose, but I guess it's just a good illustration. We needed an illustration for what to do when that happens. We're going to put a little spot of glue on the bottom here. We'll kind of push that back in there first. Then we'll use our tweezer to kind of squeeze it down where it belongs. And it looks great. Okay, so we've got that fan. Next, we're going to... Put a little glue on these petals, just a dab on each petal. We're going to fold those petals in, and we are going to have a beautiful fairy flower petal with three colors, orange, yellow, and raspberry. I should say orange, lemon, and raspberry. That would work, wouldn't it, Jordan? Yeah. Sounds like something to drink then. Orange, lemon, and raspberry colors. Make me want sorbet. <laughs> now Jordan wants sorbet, and it's all my fault. Yes, it is. Maybe we'll order some to go after our pizza. I don't have that. Uh, sorbet is usually really low. Okay. We'll look. I, just, I wasn't sure since we'll it's look. probably just sugar. Okay. No, nope, it's a lot less than ice cream. I'll tell you that. Okay. A lot less. Okay. Now, 
I'm going to clean up just a little bit, get a little of this excess glue off. I just really have been glue crazy today. All right, let's do the calyx of our flower. I've got my sage. I'm going to wrap this around and anchor it. A little bit of glue on there. Well, a lot of people don't have to anchor these. I guess I just pull harder than a lot of people. I find it's much easier on me, and I have less rework if I just anchor it to start with. It's a little glue. I'm going to put my base pin in. I'm, this is the calyx now, so I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to wrap up one pin. I'm going to come around it, and I'm going to glue that. Just a little bit. And I'm going to go straight to the sides now. I'm going to wrap to the side. Come back. Glue a little bit. I'm still going to the inside of my pegs on the my angular pens. Coming back. So I just went up one pen for the calyx of my flower. Go around. Come back. Up around one pin. I forgot I had to add a green. See, I did it again. But you know, it's not a disaster. Especially since you're gluing it. Just add a little piece. Right here. We're doing great. We'll be done probably by 5.30, I'll bet. Um, I believe it when I see it. <laughs> I always say that and then end up finding something else that you want to do. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, these guys ask me a great question that we have to experiment yeah. because that happens too. It, it does. They're enablers every single one. <laughs> you hear that, guy? She's calling you enablers. <laughs> As long as it's craft enabling, I think that's a good thing, though, right, guys? <laughs> I <completely> disagree. <laughs> uh oh, my join fell apart. I pull too hard on things that I haven't let dry yet. Diane says, I'm not wrong. <laughs> and and Ed says, well, yes, we are, Jordan. <laughs> you guys can admit it. First step is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> oh, Jordan, Jordan, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Crafty keeps us out of the bars. Sorry, we're guilty as charged. <laughs> okay, let's see what our calyx for our flower is going to look like. Let's lift this up. I think there's one I didn't glue. <laughs> it was not for illustration purposes. I just didn't do it. And that might mean, ah, it looks okay. Might mean we have to repair a spring. Or not. Okay. This is going to be the calyx of our flower, believe it or not. We're doing it a lot like the flower petals. So this is a really easy thing to do. Next, let's make some leaves. I don't think that's long enough, but I think it would be long enough if I add. Oops, that's our stem. I can't add that. Don't steal the stem. 
We have no shame, Diane said. <laughs> we all know one who has no shame. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> The number one craft enabler. <laughs> it's a title I wear proudly, guys. <laughs> Putting my green together so I can make some leaves. I'm gonna make two leaves. Don't know if this will be long enough or not. Might have to add again, but let's go ahead. Is Jordan the one going for a CPA? No, Jordan is my digital artist at least we aren't hiding our problem we're out in the open with it most of us have craft rooms full we can't hide our stash <laughs> did you hear her guy she said she could just imagine us in a back room trading craft supplies <laughs> Oh, see, now they know you are my daughter for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Same humor. I mean, as you told me my entire life, I couldn't deny you even if I wanted to. No, Jordan looks just like me. She doesn't have the gray hair yet. <laughs> it's coming along, <laughs> it's though. Coming along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I attached my green and I have started winding. I could do this on a comb, but um, I don't need to switch tools. I'm just going to start winding at that pedal, and I'm going to start winding right up this, right up this center channel where we started our flower. I'm going to go right on up there, and I think I'm actually going to add. I think I have room to add a peg. I think I'll add one more peg. I'm not going to tear that off yet. I'm going to put one more peg in there. <laughs> All right. Yep, just when you think it's safe to go back in the water, you have your craft room all put away. Debbie has a $2 Tuesday sale. And you're right back to square one. <laughs> And you can see, I have no shame about that either. Okay. I added an extra peg that doesn't want to go down into the hole, but it's still stuck there nicely for me so I could finish my leaf. <laughs> the answer is exactly, exactly what happens. Okay. Now, we could use our leaves. We can actually use our leaves just like this. This is, on, let me put it on a piece of paper so you can see it. It's pretty. We can use our leaves just like this. Or there's another trick I can show you. And why not? Since Jordan's already complaining we're gonna, that there's not a chance we're going to finish at 5.30, I'll just add to our project a little bit. See there? It's pretty. It has those little loopies all the way up it. No, there's a dozen bottles of it out there, Diane. I bought a case because I'm not buying from, oops, that's not laying on there quite right. I might have to tear that. There we go. Hmm. Huh. My little leaf is not behaving. Hang on here, I gotta resort it out. Which is the inside? I'm not gonna work on this too long. If it just won't behave, I will start it again. When you looked online, it said it was out of stock. No way. Let me look, let me look. <laughs> okay. 
there might have been something wrong with the way it was put in, or maybe somebody bought 10 bottles. If they did, uh, well, I don't like the way that leaf turned out. We're going to just, I'm going to pull these pins since I don't need them anymore. It'll make it faster and easier to make my leaves. Your little husking. Some, I was talking to a lady the other day in my class who's been um, quilling for like a year and a half, and she's used her husking board continually, but her little board came with a packet of pins. And, Hi, Mary R. Good to see you, friend. We love you. Um, her packet came, or her, um, her board came with a packet of pins, and she didn't know there was a little storage drawer inside. My calyx sprung on me. I'm going to put a little glue right there and fold it right back where it belongs. Okay? Just like that. Now, I'm going to make that. It just didn't want to behave. Sometimes that happens. So I'm just going to do it again. Okay. How's Gemma doing, Mary? I know it's hard to type. Don't feel like you have to. I shouldn't have asked that question today. I know your shoulder hurts you. Okay. All right. Let's just bit the or make these leaves up real quick. All I'm doing is wrapping one wrap around each pin, guys. I could do this on a comb too. There we go. I've wrapped one time around each pen. Gone back to my base. I'm gonna glue the end in place. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet she has been very attention seeking. Okay. I've got my leaf belt and there i think you can see it better this time it's just wasn't behaving last time okay let's get another one i'm going to make four leaves i would have just made two but jordan says we can't get out at 5 30. excuse so. me yeah jordan says we can't get out at 5 30 so i have to go just a little longer i'll make four leaves <laughs> yep, she says we can't do it, so I guess we can't do it, guys. Let's just hang in there a little extra. Okay, wrapping, wrapping one pig per time. I'm wrapping, I'm wrapping pig number four, number five. I'm beginning to be worried that I didn't leave enough room. I did not. Let's just add on to this piece. We're going to get four leaves here. If I wanted, and I'm sure you guys will know what I mean, but if I wanted my leaves to be longer, Instead of going up and down on my board towards the semicircle, I could go side to side in the long area here. And I could make longer leaves if I wanted to. As it turns out, I don't want long leaves, so that's okay. Okay, tear off and glue down. We have two done. Yep, 
Aunt Gemma's probably giving you extra attention because she knows you're hurting, too. Not only is she unsure of herself and missing Bob, but she knows you're hurting, so she's going to give you extra love. Okay, wrapping my third leaf around my peg. Our pets know when we need them. Okay, putting my base pig back in. I'm wrapping number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Tear off and glue. Gemma is her young German shepherd. Ah. Okay, there's three done. Let's do one more. I think I'm probably going to need another piece of green added on here. I'll anchor this and, and maybe just add it now. Whew. <laughs> and that has a cat named Biscuit. Biscuit. I love that name. And Selma has a cat named Naughty Kitty. <laughs> and your mother has a cat named Brat. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. Wind this around my base peg. Glue my little anchor because we all know I pull too hard and it won't stay wrapped if I don't glue it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, her ears went back when I said biscuit. <laughs> I think I told you guys that Margie and James are all excited about chickens, but they're vegetarians. Their chickens will have long, healthy lives. I got them for the eggs, but they'll never, ever eat their chickens. But they do have crude senses of humor, and they're, they're naming their chickens after chicken dishes. So we've got cashew, and we've got peanut, and we've got cacciatore. <laughs> They've got like 30 chickens now, and they all have food names, all chicken dishes, <laughs> sesame, and <laughs> okay, that's our fourth leaf. Let's take it off, pull our pen out. Now, I'm, now we could have used our leaves just like this, and in my sample card, that's exactly what I did. But since we had to use a little extra time here, I'm going to take two of these and I'm going to glue them together to form a beautiful leaf. I'm going to glue all the way down the side. Then I'm going to pinch the two ends. And what I'm going to end up with is something very pretty. Look at that. Alfredo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kiev. Kiev, yes. <laughs> Nugget. 
nugget. Yeah, I, I actually know they have a nugget, and I'm pretty sure they have a Kiev. Look at that leaf now, guys. How beautiful is that? I guess we made double leaves, so there you go, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so one would be fried, yes. <laughs> it's actually kind of a clever way to name your chicken, so I have to admit. <laughs> when Margie comes back, if she hasn't told you already, I'm going to have her tell you the story of chicken timeouts. On my table... Over there on the carousel, there is a little tiny pair of green scissors. Mm -hmm. Would you grab it for me, please? Thanks. Okay, it's time for assembly, guys. We're done with our board. I'll pull all my pins, put them in the drawer, in hopes that I won't lose any more today. I'm really short on this. Okay. We have our stem. We have our leaves. We have our calyx. And we have our flower parts. We have our card. We are going to... Whew, I'm first going to put just a little bit of a bow in my stem because I like that effect. So I'm going to put a little bit of a bow in my stem. These. <laughs> I had Jordan grab my super snippers. I laughed at Margie when she had a pair of these. And then <laughs> chicken pastry. <laughs> um, and then I found them. I tried hers and I found them to be so useful for quilling. I started stocking them in the store. Sometimes when you just need to get in in little tiny places, these are actually superb scissors. Superb. But I, I can't tell the story like, well, I can. I'd be mocking. Yes, I would. <laughs> but George, um, I'm going to let Margie tell the story, then I'll intersperse my comments. <laughs> okay. I think I'll put my stem on after I build my blossoms. So I'm going to build my blossoms coming out this way. When I glue this, I'm just going to put a nice bit of glue on the back here. And I'm going to come out there. That's how better than this side. And glue here. I might be having these go on just a little too high. Let's bring them down just a little. Maybe still too high. There we go. All right. And. little glue here. And then I'm going to glue my petals. I'm going to set this row on top. Now, if you don't want two layers, you can put these, just fan them out. I kind of like layering them up, but you can fan them instead and have kind of a spread out flower. We're looking from the side at the flower, so. I'm going to use my little super snips anywhere that it kind of sticks up, like 
maybe um, in my yellow here, I was, it, I, it didn't wrap right on top of the other one. It's kind of sticking up. I love my little super snips. <laughs> like I said, I gave Margie such a hard time. And then I tried them and ordered them. <laughs> okay. We're looking at this flower from the side. That's the that's the assumption. We're going to use our calyx. We're going to put it into the bottom. And I'm going to actually going to kind of spread this out a little bit more so it's not just leaning down. And I'm going to put my calyx just like this, like it's a bud that opened and let that flower come out. So I'm going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom. Just to hold this in place. And again, if it shows white when you lay it down, don't worry. This glue will dry white or clear. Not to worry. I'm going to push this up in there and then let it lay down. I'm going to take my stem and put it right up against that little loop. I'm going to put a little glue to attach it there. And I'm going to try to run a little bead along the bottom here. This is always a little hit and miss. I'm not going to glue it clear to the end because I'm probably going to snip it off. But... With that little bend in my stem, I always like that. I'm going to add my second or my first leaf with two petals. This is such an easy way to create beautiful leaves. You can also do that on a comb. I'm going to snip this stem off here. Now, we are looking at our flower from the side, so there's only one thing missing. We have plenty of room to do a greeting, but that's not what's missing. We need to have some little stamens sticking up out of our flower. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of yellow here, and I'm going to quickly twist some little coils. I'm going to use a half a sheet, I think. I have to look at how big they're turning out. It might be a quarter of a sheet. I can't remember. But let me see how big it's turning out. Could grab my quilling tool. And I'm going to quickly wind up a little coil. Half is fine. I'm going to wind up a little tight coil. I'm going to glue it. And then I'm going to glue it at the top of my flower. As if that's a little calyx sticking up out of my flower, or a little stamen sticking up out of my flower. I'm going to do another. I still probably got my flower a little high. It's fine, but if I did it again, I'd probably put it just a little lower.
second little statement sticking up. I wanted to draw little lines, I could, but they're just supposed to kind of represent statements, so I don't feel compelled to draw a line. Let's add one more. Yes, they would. You could actually stick real statement in here and they'd be really pretty too. <clears throat> Three. Three little statement. Get a little glue on him. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Oh. Come on. Like I said, I got this a little high, but you can still see where I was going with it. Back up just a little, Jordan. There is our completed fairy flower or whimsical flower. Now imagine um, stamping a little dancing fairy or something down here. Or maybe a little mushroom house. You could use this right along with your fairy stamps. And that is our fantasy flower, our whimsical flower. It was that quick and easy to do. I didn't pre-make any of the petals this time. We made the entire card online. And it took us about an hour and a half. Isn't that fun? You got those bright fuchsia centers. You've got that pretty yellow inside. We're picking up on the yellow again with the border around the oval and the and the um, stamen sticking up. Look at those pretty leaves. Didn't those leaves turn out pretty? And it's just little loopies glued together. Isn't that a fun way to go? Now, I have to admit something here. When I was designing this flower, I had the stamen turned around the other way, this or the calyx, and I was trying to fit it up around the petals. And Bryce said, turn it the other way. I think it looked really good. And he was absolutely right. It looks just right, completely open. So that's actually Bryce's device there. I was going the opposite way with it. What kind of questions, comments do you guys have about using your husking board? Is this something now that you feel like you would be ready to try? Pulling on a husking board? It's easy, isn't it? All, you know, the, the truth is, guys, all quilling is easy. <laughs> if you make things that look so, like such filigree and they look so fancy, and they look like they'd be so hard to do. But the truth is, it just takes minutes. And they're beautiful. And they're very, very easy. Quilling is so easy. So this is our monthly installment. We agreed that I will still bring you a variety of things on Thursdays. But you are letting me share my love of quilling once a month. So this was our project for the month. Next month, I'll come up with something else to show you. And um, Saturday, we are going to be working. I've got my box together, but I haven't decorated it yet. We're going to be working on the treasure box together. So I've got this box ready to decorate in preparation, just so I know what I'm doing. And Saturday, we will make and decorate the treasure box for the Under the Sea album set. So this is coming up on Saturday. We have plenty of kits out there for that album still. So if you haven't gotten yours, grab it. It's great fun. And um, do you guys have any questions at all for me before I get away?
go order some pizza. Bryce is out of town. Pizza it is. <laughs> Giving you just a second to see if there's any questions. Quick and easy to do. I tell you, we used our husking board. We used four colors of quilling strips at $1.49 a piece. We used the dried marigold distress oxide to do our brush work. We did. We used our blending brush. I love my Quilled Creations tweezers. Come in very handy on a project like this. We used our super snippers. We used a basic quilling tool. And we used our glue. Oh, and our card, our card base. We used that too. That's all we used today. <laughs> you don't need a craft room full of things to do quilling. If you like this class, be sure you hit the thumbs up for me. I love it. It makes me feel happy. Did you get any get any, any alphabet? They should be here in the boxes that are here now, Annette. Um, if not this week, we'll see them next week. And... Um, if you're not a subscriber to our channel, hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss anything we're up to. We're just doing fun stuff here all the time at a pace that real people can work. Okay? And um, be sure you refer your friends and neighbors to our website, www.simplyspecial.com, and to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have more crafty friends, and we promise we'll take care of them. If there's no other questions... I'm going to say good night, Gracie.